Hello everyone and welcome to the start of a mini series that was voted for by my Patreon. So thank you so much for all my Patreon members for their continued support and my YouTube members for supporting me. They voted for this video and well there's two videos that will be comprising of this mini series of how to add key mappings and key bindings and change those key bindings during the game itself. So for purposes of this video I have uh, put together a basic demo. Uh, of my ability system. Now the ability system is very uh, streamlined and stripped down. All I've got in there is one ability and that's to roll. And I've assigned it so far to this first button here. So as I say, it stripped it right out, but essentially it works the same way. I click button, it calls a uh, ability, uh, a, a function called cast ability. And it, in this case, plays an animation. So the functionality of my ability system is basically the same as my ability system series. So this would work with it the same way. I wanted to strip it down so it didn't get confusing with all the extra pieces. Uh, you can see the key mapping stuff on its own in a vacuum. So how do we tie this to a, a binding? And how do we change that binding? So in this first part, we're going to cover how to bind this ability here to a key binding. And in the second video part, we'll create a UI where we can click and change that binding at will during the game. So let's get started with how this works. So the first we need to do is assign our button on our screen to key maps. So I'm going to go to my ability system folder and look at the ability slot UI. This is the individual slot for each ability and each one will be assigned an ability when you click on it. So what I'm going to do is go to the graph and in the variables here I'm going to add a new variable and call it mapping. And this mapping is going to be of a type of key. And you want to make this editable. Hit compile and save. Now if I were to go into my ability bar UI where I stack the bars up, I can click on each one and I can assign by default their initial mapping. So this first one here I can assign to the button 1 on my keyboard. This one can be assigned to 2. And this one to 3. And so on and so forth. What I want to do now is make this text block here inside my slot here to change to display the new ability mapping. Now you don't necessarily have to have the text for yourself, but I'm going to use text in there to help show that it's being changed. So I go back to my ability slot UI. And I've got my ability text here. And we want on the pre-construct event, we want to get the mapping out and choose get. Then we also want to get the text here that I have. So I have binding text, choose that. And this refers to this widget here like so and on binding text we're going to take this out and we're going to set text this will change the text that appears inside that text with a uh, field now the in text it can be the mapping text and you can't just drag it in you need to get the name of this mapping so drag this out and type in name and you'll see get key display name you can now plug that in to your set text hit compile and save so now on my ability bar, you can see these are updated. Because they're on a pre-construct event, these update for me in the editor. Okay, so now we've got a mapping. But we, when we push that key, nothing's going to happen because we haven't tied it to actual player controller. So let's go through and show you how to do this for the ability system here. So I'm going to go into my player controller. And I need to handle my inputs from my player controller because the player controller is one of the first things that receives inputs. So on here, I want to get the any key event. So when I check any key at all. Now what's quite important here is I don't want this to consume the input. So go up here and say consume input, turn off. This is just in case you bind something that is also bound to something else. You don't want to accidentally block that. So you don't lose that walking or backwards or anything like that. So now we've got your any key. We want to make a function that would check our bindings. So I'm going to create a new function called check bindings. Now this will have an input and the input we're going to need here is the key and you'll see it come from here key uh, key structure from our any key event. So go to your input settings for your check bindings and type in key and look for the key structure event. Verbal type. There you go. So with that in mind, we can now do our job of looking through our heads-up display and looking at our ability bar and see what mappings they have. So when I created my 
head up display my controller, I stored it as a reference, which you should have done. So in here, I've got head up display. I'm going to drag this out, choose get, and then from there, I can get the ability bar. And this is a UI that is part of my head up display. From the ability bar UI, I can now get all the individual children of that bar. So I'm going to say, if I get uh, ability grid, and this refers to the horizontal box that's inside my ability bar UI, and then get the children of that grid. And this will get all of my action bar buttons. You then want to drag this out and do a for each loop, because you need to check each one. We're then going to go and cast this widget reference to our ability slot. Cast to ability slot UI. Once you've got that, you can now get the mapping information from your ability slot UI. Now we've got the mapping, we've also got the key, we want to compare the two. So rather than dragging it from here, because you'll just get an unsightly line across the whole entire thing, you can just search for it because it's inside a function, it'll appear. And you'll see get key. And we want to see if these two are equal. So if they are equal, to each other. We'll put that into a branch. And if it's true, we're going to take from a as ability slots UI, take this out and do cast ability. And assign it to true. And finally hit compile and save. So what's going to happen here is we're getting a head up display and the ability bar within it. We're then looking inside the ability bar UI at the ability grid, which is the grid of buttons that I have for my abilities. I'm looking at all the children, so I'm going to cycle through each one. And for each one, I'm going to check the mapping that's been assigned to it and whether or not it's equal to the key I've pushed. If that's the case, great. I can then put that through a branch and tell it to cast the ability from the ability slot UI. And this is basically it. Um, all you have to do really for other things, uh, I chose ability bar because it is a, a common use for key bindings and key changing um, that you see in games. But you can do this for many other things too. Um, but this is the easiest way to show it, I guess. But if you've got your ability bar and ability buttons in other things as well, you need to make that as an array. As long as you've got an array of the items that you have, you can put them into a for each loop. Uh, there are other ways around also um, making this tidier and easier, um, but this would be the simplest way of doing it. So let's go through our cast ability and test this out. Oh, first, sorry, actually, I've got to assign it to our key input. So go to the event graph, go to any key, and drag our check bindings event, plugging in the key that we've pushed into it. Hit compile and save, and now push play. So now, as I run around, if I hit one on my keyboard, he'll cast the ability. And I, I can also click on this and it will also cast the ability. And to show the other ones aren't set up with anything either, it's not a trick. They're not set up to anything. Just one set up to roll. And that will do for this first part. In the second part, I'm going to show you how to create a window where you can change the buttons assigned to these abilities uh, on the fly. So join us in the next part right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely. You can watch that video plus many more videos all from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed to my content, please subscribe. It really does help me out massively. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.